Our week-long spotlight on Richmond series continues tonight with a look at a college football Hall of Famer who became a larger-than-life presence in and all around Richmond. That's right. LAX 18's Michael Burke joins us live now from Roy Kidd Stadium with more on the man for whom that building was named. Michael. Larry in Larry in uh, Division One AA, the former Division One AA, which is now FCS. Two names, coaching names, their giants are synonymous with that era. It's Eddie Robinson from Grambling University and Roy Kidd. But Kidd, as we suspected would be the case, was really so much more than just a football coach. And if not for a career choice he made in the late 1960s, none of this would have happened here at EKU. You wonder what's on this man's mind when he gazes upon all of this inside the stadium that bears his name. Maybe it's the 314 career wins or the two national championships or how he helped put Richmond on the proverbial map. Or perhaps he's thinking about how none of this would have been possible had he acted upon the one and only regret Coach Roy Kidd ever had. I was offered a job at Marshall, but I didn't take that. But that, that might have been a mistake that I look back. But if I would taken that job, I'd have been in that wreck. That wreck? Southern Airways Flight 932, carrying the Marshall football team home in 1970. All 75 people on board were killed. The coach's only regret saved his life. He stayed in Richmond, a life-altering decision in more ways than one. Well, it was just home to me, you know. I went to school here. It's my school. And it's all he's ever known. A coaching career that spans six decades began at Madison High School, where he also coached baseball and basketball. And he learned the art of recruiting at a very young age. When his youth baseball team needed a coach, he went to his sixth grade teacher. He said, well, I don't know nothing about baseball. I said, don't worry about it. I said, I'll keep the score. I said, I'm, I'll make the lineup. I'll, I'll put everybody's positions down, where they play, what position. I know who the pitchers will be. I said, I know everything. You just act like you're the head coach. And that's all it was, just an act. Because in reality, even as a kid, he was always coach kid. Now at 89 years old, nothing's changed. Players 70 years younger, making it a point to stop by, shake his hand maybe even get a little advice on how to shed a blocker. Well, it just tickles me, you know. I, lo I love it when my ex-players come around. Ex-players like Jake Johnson. He's now the defensive coordinator here. Coach was kind of a father figure for us. Um, it was things that you'd go to talk to him about if you need something. Um, and he was a guy that, that, that showed you tough love, too. John Revere got some of that tough love after scoring against Middle Tennessee. I was going into the end zone after I caught it, and I had it up. Uh, and, uh, and the ball kind of slipped out of my hand. Well, you know, of course, I maintained control and went in the end zone with it. And then I came to the bench, and uh, he came over and he says, I just want you to know one thing. If you had to drop that ball, you'd have been walking back to Richmond. <laughs> they could joke because they had won that day. They did an awful lot of that around here. Coach Kidd is number 10 on college football's all-time wins list. They went to four consecutive national title games, won 16 conference championships. Ten times he was named Coach of the Year. Those things matter to Coach Kidd's players back then, but it's not what they remember about him now. The people I deal with and the circles I travel in um, certainly understand the magnitude that Coach Kidd has placed on this university and this community, uh, and even the state. If you aren't doing the right things, he'd pull you inside and he'd, he'd tell you about it and get you, get you going, but uh, you wanted that. You know, and, and as a player, you wanted a coach that would stay on you and do things like that. Um, and he was, he was happy to oblige. So maybe that's what runs through his mind when he looks out at all of this. Not the wins, not the championships, not the statue, but the thousands of lives he impacted over 38 years, including the man's who's now roaming the same sideline. And Walt Wells was on my staff for a while. He, I tell you, he's a good coach. He'll do a good job here. How could he possibly fail? He learned from the best. Now we're back live at Roy Kidd Stadium. Now there's one other coaching offer scenario that could have played out here that would have made the outcome much different. In 1990, when Bill Curry had accepted the UK job, Roy Kidd was next in line. If Curry had passed coming off a 10-win season in Alabama, the job would have been kids, and he told me he probably would have accepted that because the money would have been too good. So that would have wiped out 13 seasons here. So sometimes the best move you make is the move you do not make. Live in Richmond, for Spotlight in Richmond, I'm Michael Burke. Let's send it back to you.